Hello and welcome back and today I'm going to continue with part 3 of my 5 gigabit ethernet test showing you guys exactly what you can do with 5 gigabit ethernet NAS. I'm still utilizing all of those Seagate hard drives and SSD and I'm utilizing the QNAP TVS 672N. Today we want to look at video editing. We're going to take a small scale look at video editing over 5 GBE and we're going to see how it compares to local editing versus 1 GBE editing versus 5 GBE editing. We're going to run the same um, editing file on both a standard uh, laptop here, right here in front of me. We're then going to run it over 1 GBE with all of the files, the raw files living on the NAS and finally we're going to be utilizing the 5 GBE connection to the same NAS. Now for those, I'm going to go for it nice and brief uh, so you don't have to remember it from the previous video. What we've got is a this QNAP NAS connected via a 1 GBE connection and a 5 GBE connection. On top of that we have mapped a pile of uh, map network drives here and with drives R, S and T being conducted over 5 gigabit ethernet with drives X, Y and Z all being conducted over 1 gigabit ethernet. Now we're going to be running today's tests on the RAID 5 configuration. So this is utilizing Seagate Ironwolf NAS hard drives and we're utilizing those drives in a RAID 5 environment. So we're going to be running a test on my core PC here and the core PC system is going to be util um, arrives I believe with uh, a 6th gen or 7th gen i a 6th gen i7 even 16 gig of memory and an SSD inside that's going to give me somewhere between 3 and 400 megs. So with that storage in mind we're going to start doing the first editing test. So this is a complete fresh version of Mavavi that we're using on screen. We're going to make our way into the PC here and we're going to find an old bit of footage using the TVS 672N. So we're going to utilize the unboxing uh, video that we did for NC. We're going to find that video. There it is there. We're then going to drag that into the test software and we're going to start chopping it down and relaying some effects. So first and foremost, let's shorten that down. Let's get it down to exactly five minutes, shall we? Let's go for five minutes. Um, on top of that, we're going to apply maybe some effects. So let's go for blinds. Then on top of that, maybe we'll chuck some text on there. You know, just for the hell of it at the beginning, we'll call this one... Um, we're going to call this one local SSD test. Get that moved over there. We'll call this one using internal SSD. Do that there. We've already shortened that video file. Perhaps we'd like to clip it slightly and then, I don't know, chop a little bit out there or move that around so we can change the ordering of it. We're not going to go for anything too intensive here. We just want just to quickly do some bits and bobs, maybe we'll apply a different effect to the second half. So we'll do maybe this effect here. So we did blinds, so let's do circle out on that one. So now these this awful video that I'm going to create at five minutes long has now been created. Let's save this project. So let's save this project as, and we'll save this on my local desktop and we'll call this one, let's go to desktop, let's just call this file local SSD editing test. Nice and simple. So from there, we've got this test already lined up. So next, let's get the stopwatch out. Get that up. Apparently not. If we put clock, we might get somewhere with that. And we want to get the stopwatch ready. And then what I'll do is I'll get the test started and then I'll run that stopwatch there in the background. Before I do start this, it's worth reminding you I am using OBS. So that is going to utilize a lot of the GPU power of this device. But what we're looking at here is what is going to be our base speed for if we were editing this file on the local machine. So let's make our way here. Let's export. We want to export the video. We're going to export it at 1080p. 
we want it to be the highest quality 1080p and we'll deposit it on the desktop and we'll go from there we'll use an mp4 file we'll get that moved there we'll get the clock set up there and we'll get things started and we'll click start I don't know why I'm using that clock there because quite obviously there's a clock here now it's worth highlighting that of course what I'm doing right now is utilizing a small test case of what you would end up doing if you were running huge editing processes. I am well aware of what I'm doing right now is more of a microcosm environment of how these things compare over 1 GBE local and, 10, uh, and 5 GBE. But the results that we're going to have will stack up against one another in the grand scheme of things. And in order to keep this video nice and short for you guys, uh, this is how we're going to do it. I'm hopefully going to do some more uh, extensive testing uh, with regard to the Seagate Iron Wolf SSDs in a future video. But just to show you guys about the benefits of 5GBE, I did think it was worth going through this. Now, while we're doing this, hopefully the screen recording software is still capturing this, although I'm sure the GPU is getting hit pretty hard, you will see that network activity is at zero. Hopefully, this screen recording is still taking place while I'm doing this, although it would not surprise me if it turns out that when I'm doing this, you're seeing a kind of a choppy recorded footage because of us using capture software. Um, we'll leave this now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward now to the completion of this project so we can see that what the elapsed time is and how effectively what we can do to beat this with 5 GBE or how much better or worse is it than 1 GBE. Let's move forward. Right, so the project is complete and it took just around 3 minutes and 10 seconds there. Hopefully I've kept that on the screen there for you. And what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to run the exact same operation, but this time it's going to be done using 1 gigabit Ethernet. There's our video there that we've created. Hopefully it's still being kept on the capture recording with our strange editing effects that we've performed. A lot of them won't have applied until we've put them in. We'll fast forward through there. But what I'll do now is I'll move over to using exactly the same editing setup, but this time utilizing 1GBE. So I'll just fast forward to the completion of this edit. Right, so we finished the editing, this time utilizing the 1GBE connection. So this time we've used exactly the same file as last time, but this time the file is found on our mapped 1 gigabit Ethernet connected NAS drive. Remember port 147, and again we can head here, port 147, not the 5GBE connection. On top of that, I've also saved this file to the NAS drive, so the saved project is living on the NAS drive over 1GBE, as you can see here. And again, 147Y drive, drive. so we're using the RAID 5 connection. So we're using all the, exactly the same editing test, but this time utilizing all the assets on the NAS. And in fact, we're going to save the output onto the NAS as well. So we're saving it on the Y drive. We're using 1080p at the highest configuration. And once again, while we do this, we will have the network activity on screen. So let's click start and begin. We'll bring that up on there, move that over there, and we'll see how long it's going to take to edit this five minute file. Straight away, we're seeing the network activity monitor there leap up quite substantially. And again, it's already fantastically apparent that even though this is a five minute file, 1GBE is just not cutting it. It's not even about the 100 megs connectivity. It is down to the simple fact that the, the amount of packets that we're dealing with in real time makes a NAS just not suitable for editing. So I'm gonna leave this running for a little bit further. I'm probably not gonna leave it running for more than about five minutes. Despite the fact that we are having this network activity, it's worth highlighting that of course, while we're doing it, this is really hitting a buffer and a wall here. 
So I will probably let this go to about five or six minutes if it's not done, probably cancel the completion of this target, and then I'll move over to five gigabit connectivity, connecting to exactly the same assets on exactly the same NAS, but this time using the 5GBE connection. So at its simplest, perhaps it'll be done five times faster, but there's also the opportunity that it will be a great deal faster in other ways too, due to the bandwidth. But as you can see, now the remaining time is reducing quite rapidly. Now this is probably down to the fact that it was finding it very difficult to deal with these network files, with all of the blocks being almost unmanageable for these files. The original file that we're dealing with um, is around about, I think, one and a half gig in size, or a gigabyte in size, the original editing file that we've chopped up down here. But for now, we're already coming up to nearly two minutes and the project is not only nowhere near complete, but also getting some rather erratic results. We are seeing that remaining clock come down, but I'm assuming once again that that is because the entire file now has been transferred over to the cache on my laptop. Had I been dealing with bigger files, we would have seen difficulties, but I'm gonna fast forward to the completion of this project. Right, so we're coming into the last 20 seconds or so of our video editing test with Mavavi over 1GBE. So we've already exceeded, coming close to almost twice that of editing on the local SSD with a time at 5 minutes 15 seconds there. Again, not exactly awe-inspiring, and this was a simple 5 a uh, five minute video file. And if you're editing bigger files, this only goes to show why editing over um, one gigabit Ethernet NAS is just not suitable. So what we're gonna do now is do the final stage of our test, which is to conduct this exact same testing scenario, but this time utilizing the five gigabit Ethernet connection and those Iron Wolf drives over five GBE. Let's fast forward to the completion of that. Right, so we finished editing the files that we've pulled over from our 5GBE NAS connection. As you can see, these files are located on the S drive, IP ending 142. The IP ending 142, as you can see, is located here, IP 142, the 5 gigabit connection. And all of the files that we are utilizing are based on that NAS. Additionally, I have cleared the cache to make sure that we're not utilizing any background information from the previous tests. So. There's our connection there. There's the files that we're utilizing. We've renamed it there. We're still using the five gig connection. We've saved it to the five GPU connection as well. So if we go there, we can see that the file that we're utilizing is there. There's our five GB connection right there. We've renamed it. So let's export this file and let's see if 5GBE is gonna be the answer to our prayers. We want to browse and this time we want to find our 5GBE drive which is going to be that S drive there, utilizing the RAID 5 using Seagoat Ironwolves. Save it into that directory. We're gonna use the highest quality. We're gonna read 1080p, and we're gonna get this test started now. We're gonna leave that there on the side. We'll open up the network bandwidth connectivity, and straight away, you can see that network bandwidth the amount of network speeds, even at the initial point of download, was massively higher than that of the original 1GBE connection. We're already seeing vastly better video editing performance here than we saw with the 1GBE connection. So right now, even based on these initial findings, we can see that 5GBE is definitely better than 1GBE for video editing. That was never really the question. The question was always going to be, is editing over a 5GBE adapter just as good as editing on a local machine? Because that's what you guys want. You want a NAS that you can edit with that isn't going to break the bank like a lot of these 10GBE or Thunderbolt solutions. And right now, things are looking promising. With the first test on the local SSD, that took us somewhere around that 32330 mark, if I recall. I will check at the end, but right now, on, we are on track for editing over the 5GBE NAS using a RAID 5 connection to match that of editing on this local um, Thunderbolt 
uh, PC. But right now, I'm going to fast forward a little bit to the completion of this edit. But I'll be honest, this is looking promising from me. And as we close in to the last eight or seven or eight percent, we can see that editing this file over 5GBE has been very, very promising. We're utilizing this, and I think these speeds have matched, if not have slightly beaten, the local editing of this exact same test file that was utilized on the local machine. So, all we've learned today is editing on a NAS that's supporting 5GBE and of course using that RAID 5 thanks to those Seagate um, Ironwolf NAS drives, always use your NAS hard drives people, we've seen that we are getting just as good editing speeds in this test over 5GBE as we were getting on the local machine. I'm going to wrap things up here. This was part three of my five gigabit Ethernet tests utilizing hard drives and SSD. Um, if you've got any other recommendations while I've got this equipment here, do, do let me know. I'm well aware that these have been more microcosm tests of larger test environments, and therefore these may not best suit the way that you've been utilizing um, data in your environments. These should be used more as guidelines that can be taken as a key towards a grander scale. But for me personally, this has proven the utility of 5GBE in, t in terms of all of those speed tests that we did with AJA Black Magic and Windows File Transfer, as well as Steam Gaming and of course, Mavavi Video Editing. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do click like and subscribe if you've enjoyed these videos and want to learn more. And I'll see you guys on the next video.